The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of Into the Pit or the Vibes Broadcast Network. The show is intended for mature audiences. Please welcome your host, Coyote Knight. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Into the Pit. I have here Mr. Ron Meyer. Uh, he is a filmmaker, I guess say documentarian. Uh, he, he knows quite a bit about Bigfoot, aliens. Um, he's on Amazon um, and he's got a project that he wants to talk to you about. And I've, I've known him for a while. I'm really excited to talk to him. How are you doing, Mr. Meyer? I'm doing well. And you? Man, I, I'm good. so good. I can't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of March, uh... Uh, this, this feature film that I produced was released on Amazon Prime. It's streaming there now. It's called The Bigfoot Alien Connection Revealed. I'm going to hold up the DVD for people to see, just in case. Gotcha, gotcha. Find DVDs that much as well. Uh, okay. So <laughs> it's been quite successful. It's been averaging about 3,500 people a day streaming it. Hard to believe it, but that many people have been watching it. And the reviews kind of go right down the center. Half like it, half hate it. And it's largely because I'm proposing that the cryptids are alien in nature. They're not some either a primate or some other form of humans like Neanderthal or running around or maybe some wild men or something like that, but that they're, they're alien in nature and they're probably quasi interdimensional. This came about because I was hired to do a, a series about five years ago called Chasing Bigfoot, which is also streaming. I was filming for a long time. And I interviewed a lot of people and they had contact with the kids. And number of number of them reported, you know, what strange things happened when they saw them. It was transformational for their life. So one of the one of the experts I interviewed was Jim Myers, the director of the Sasquatch Outlaws in Daly, Colorado. And he said, I, I have a different view of the um, I think a lot of people that investigate this point of view eventually because they never find big foot in the they don't see a body, they don't, they see footprints that last for four or five seconds, that's it. Um, and he had people come to his, his, his shop and they report, that's when he does the takes some reports from the Rocky Mountain. And a number of these people reported incidents where the Bigfoot merged into a tree, disappeared, appeared out of nowhere. That they have properties that are still physical, but he thought that they're not, they're not human flesh, and, they're not flesh and blood. There's some, there's some form of, of being an alien, but she wasn't quite sure. But he thought that they had access to interdimensional channel four, which is one of their main characteristics, and shape shifted into, into orb. And that that got me interested in thought, wow, it's, that's more reasonable because I wasn't blind. It was a creature that uh, running around in the wild that nobody's ever really got real hard evidence that there exists some physical form. He had all these characteristics that people describe. You don't you don't associate with people when they see gorillas or other animals that they shape shift and change into their form, and that their contact has these defined effects on them psychological and spiritual. So I decided, well, I, I did all this research, so let me write a book about it, a novel, which, you know, I did, and I was just beginning my research, so I came up with this book on Shifty. This is called The Bigfoot Singularity. Yes. And it's kind of a simplified version of the possibility that Bigfoot are alien creatures and that they've been here for a while, and that 
it was a thriller, it was a sci-fi drip feature thriller, where the, the Bigfoot are moving towards an evolution of Earth. They don't really know why they're here. The interaction with humans are pretty benign. Carl the father keeps the father. They have this strong relationship with native people, which you know, if you look at the literature, a lot of talk about a big foot is similar in their culture and in their identity. So, and that's the, you know, that set me on the track for kind of filmmaking, learning how to make a documentary for the see how there must be people out there besides just some person kind of taking a point of view that they. They are not natural creatures at all. They have this connection to, to, in some way, an alien nature. So I set about making a, a movie called The Big Book and the connection to the world. So I did make it. It took me <laughs> maybe a year, year and a half. And I met a lot of interesting people. I mean, Luminary, like Stan Friedman, you know who he is? Yes, actually. Probably was the most famous UFOologist. And I got him to just say in the video. I think I did the last interview he did on camera yesterday, a year ago. Mm. And he, he was open to the idea that you know, that there's there's something non natural about the he made maybe he was joking, he said they're doing a heavy lifting on this planet. Um, so he's a believer in contact. And then I uh, began to see that there was a, I, I had a look at, review the literature, the UFO literature. Uh, when I was a kid, I was fascinated with UFOs. I tried to put something in my head as an actor and actor. And but as I got older, I kind of have always been interested in something like that. But there, there had to be. There had to be other intelligence besides that. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, not to take away from the whole theory, but when I was first introduced to that idea that Bigfoot was an alien, and I don't know if you remember this or not, but you remember the Six Million Dollar Man? Sure. Okay, and the Bigfoot on there was an, from an alien planet, and it's kind of funny how life imitates art, you know, and vice versa. So, as I started looking into, you know, the pure UFO community and what research has been done, it seems like there are a lot of parallels between contact experiences people have with with aliens, which may be crafts, lights in the sky. Um, some abduction. So there's a lot of interest in that. And the Bigfoot phenomenon and the other and the UFO phenomenon sort of occurred together simultaneously because it grew right after World War II, which Friedman said had something to do with the second atomic bomb. That that changed you know, how people, how, how aliens might look at this planet that they've evolved from certain certain level that maybe is dangerous to other species that are intelligent. I'm not yeah. sure I found that. Well, I mean, I've noticed in a lot of stories that these, all these things seem to coincide in certain areas where you have UFOs, you have, you know, cryptids, and you have the all kinds of other paranormal experiences like ghosts, spirits, that, that kind of thing. I mean, there's got to be some kind of uh, a, uh, a a factor that you know contributes to it. Precisely. That that, that became the, the, there was two themes to 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 the movie that you would see developed throughout. One is one is that when you have one of these encounters with the big foot or an alien contact, that that these these events are not accidental. They're, you were chosen to have them. Uh, so if somebody is driving along and they see a big foot running across the road, which, are, which is a pretty common experience, 
it wasn't that they lucked out and there was this creature running across the road. It showed up for, for them in particular for some reason. It's quite not understood, but it always has a profound effect on the customers. And they can show up anywhere. There have been reports of people seeing Bigfoot outside their window with a nice garden there. Don't have to be in the woods anymore. So, and the same for aliens. Ordinary people are out in the yard. The light shows up above them. These are along the yard. Police reports of this type of experience. And, and so they're all moving for people in some way. They're changing the bit. And the idea is that when you have one of these experiences, you might get more if you're just good in some way, but you don't freak out. That it, some way changes your consciousness, changes your world view, which is pretty consistent with, with what people would report this. But if you're all freaked out, maybe that's it. <laughs> well, you know, there's there's been a trend over the, the last few decades where, uh, you know, these kind of reportings are starting to, to surface a little bit more, that people are more open to the idea of this being possible. Um, I know I, my attitude towards it has changed quite a bit because, you know, when I was when I was a kid, I was like, oh, that'd be so cool to see a Bigfoot. But then, you know, you get a little older and you're like, ah, that's all just a bunch of fairy tales. But then you start hearing all these stories and seeing some actual evidence. It makes me question, you know, hey, maybe there is something to this. Have you had any? I haven't. Now, I've had, you know, paranormal experiences as far as, far as with like ghosts and and spirits and that kind of thing, but uh, and I've, I've sworn that I've seen a couple of UFOs, but I have no evidence of it, and I, I just have, you know, what I saw, and even then I questioned, did I see what I think I saw? Did, did it have an impact on you? It made me kind of open my eyes a little more. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've always believed in aliens. I just thought, you know, that was like a one in a million chance that I would actually get to see these things, but I've seen it a couple of times now. So it makes me wonder. So you're one of the chosen. Lucky you. Hey, I hope so. I'm ready to, for him to come get me and uh, get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that'll happen. So, so, so that's the first premise, is that, is that these things are specific to individuals. And the next idea that's put forward in the movie is that there are these places that I call paranormal hotspots. Mm -hmm. I referred to them a little earlier, where you have multiple paraphysical paranormal events of different types occurring in a geographical area over a period of time, say maybe a year or half a year. And that there's usually a couple of people that are central focus of these events. And we, in the movie, we travel to three places to investigate these. First was Dulcet, was it? New Mexico? Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's a famous place. It's, it's an Apache reservation, um, quite isolated. Which, if you remember the story, it was, it was actually a battle with the alien military force in a mountain that's between the land base and such a lot of money. You have a cat. Yes, uh, somebody has joined in on the conversation. <laughs> she I, she, she like is. The story of, of yeah, this is my alien cat. <laughs> <laughs> She's my emotional support animal. There you go. And anyhow, so I thought that was one of the first places, in addition to the one people were reporting alien, alien, typical UFO lights sort of stuff in connection with big sites. That was back in the 70s. That was one of the things that was around. Still alive. We started that investigation. So we went down there. Uh, we had to arrange to get a guide because you can't run 
recommendation by yourself. Right. You're entitled like that. So we, we got an ex, ex policeman and his son who are on the Big 50 boat days. So they had, they had probably the most component of a big boat, which is maybe some sort of sound footprint, maybe throwing a rock at you. A strong feeling of being watched. The vision is not something. Um, and both the father and son had that experience, made it to trying to have a direct experience, a visual experience. And at first, you know, neither people suspicious of him. Eventually they warmed up and they became wonderful guys. And the police officer, of course, knew the community quite well. He talked about all of this, all this odd military activity around Delta for no apparent reason because it's full of military uh, black helicopters, transports, um, and occasionally. Full, full outfitted cars driving around. In the movie, he tells the story of one evening with a band with uh, two, two military people that were uh, decked out in terms of their like in South Korea. He stopped them because they were speeding through the country at some point and, and looked around, looked in the rain, there was a cage. They said, well, let us go and we don't have a talk about it. Uh, isn't that always the case? Yeah. And so finally, he did, he did talk about the events, you know, that he had seen these two, two, two military people full gear. You know, something was in the cage, but he didn't say what was in the cage. And, and he, he was quite convinced and came out with it. So, whenever you go out on these, do you ever get approached by people that tell you you need to like nix all that stuff? You know, give you that warning of you know you better back off or you're gonna get hurt. No, I mean, like men in black stories. Yeah, that that kind of thing. You know, the only time, the only time I heard heard of that is we went up to the Montana Gold Chest and tried to look at at, at what he would call the black lizard there three or four times. But I had no problem with it. When I was on the reservation, I talked to a lot, a lot of people there, including my ex sheriff wife. She had her own experience. Everybody had their own experience. But we were reluctant to do it. And finally, we found someone like the town crier of, of Dulce. And he, he sat down for a few talked about his own experiences and other ones in typical They rank the whole gamut of stuff. And pretty much everybody's seen strange lights. There's a valley. There's a valley like this in Montreal. And that valley gets lit up quite often. For no reason at all. And uh, Tim Anderson video or something that he captured in the other season. Uh -huh. But we had no direct experience run on the big foot on it. But what I did learn is that the sun, you know, if you heard of wood knock, that's oh yeah. Um, and when I was doing chasing the big foot down in real combat, we did wood knocks we got a wood knock fire in the area. We got that on and the kid could do a, could do a vocalization of the wood knock in his face. Really? So my theory there is that if, if they're responding, they're not grabbing a stick and a tree, they're doing a good vocalization. That's another character who's encountered with Bigfoot is that they're able to mimic virtually everything. They oh. just listen to the Sierra sound that was recorded by John Moorhead. 
which the new game can be doing in the range of what they can do is amazing. If those are real, they have a nothing any known animal ever do in the past. And they're pretty creepy when they do that. <laughs> so it's like I think you do all those vocalizations but it's okay. Um, I got a quick question for you. Sure. Now, I know in the circle that I'm in with the paranormal groups that uh, a lot of the different investigators, some of them get into like arguing and fighting and, you know, you're not doing this right and you're doing this wrong, blah, 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 blah. And instead of coming together as, a, you know, a family, now, not everybody's that way. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people out there that are really good and they, they believe in the whole community. But when it comes to those that, that go out and investigate things like Bigfoot and UFOs, is there like a lot of controversy between them or they pretty much, you know, act as a community? I would say there's a lot of division. And they all, they all kind of hold into each other. The biggest division. One of the well, the biggest is people don't believe in anything about it, right? Anything that's paranormal is just about it. delusional lies and bullshit. Uh huh. So it's just people who just don't buy that. And then within within the the Bigfoot community, of course, the largest group is still people, you know, in the dark, and they poo poo everything. Suggesting that more and more, yeah. For example, in, in the movie we interviewed Bobo, yeah, um, and, and they did when they did the show. They were not allowed to show anything paranormal. It was just you know, not part of the show. Really? Yeah, and so. Maybe for the first time I can, he described one of his experiences that was totally paranormal, which is, this is kind of typical, you hear this chomping in the field, you know, plus something big walking, feel a presence. In his case, it was like a board that's carrying a board, like here, here. Carrying an orb? An orb. Oh, wow. Everybody saw it. Why not? That that would make it that much more interesting. Well, when you're when you're doing a show, a series, you want to get to a group that, as you might that you might know. I mean, every, right. every every show has a blueprint. Every series that you have to follow precisely. If you look at them, you can you can figure it out. I mean, if you try and write for any series, they'll give you the Bible and you have to follow. It. So, and of course, then the goal is never to find the big book because if they did, that would be the end of the series. Yeah, I'm waiting for that day, though. I am waiting for that day. So, so yeah, so Bobo described his on camera, at least that one incident, off camera, he talked about his people. And, and his partner, the investigative partner, kept her on the other side, tried to get a guy to get attention to the hairy creature in front of So, so, so that division is, is pretty big and strong. People can fight with each other. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of a media person. I would, I would look at the status. Yeah. So I have you know, a little more cash. Now. now, is there like any new types of innovative equipment that they're using nowadays, or is it pretty much the same old stuff? It's pretty much the same old stuff, although, you know, People are using devices to test um, magnetic field distortion hmm. so associated with these these portals or vortexes where there are these multiple phenomena playing. So it seems like there's some distortion in the field. But the idea that there are places that are thin to the other side goes way back as part of history. Right. Places, I shouldn't call that culture. 
So it's not unknown to call it phenomenon. Uh, the paranormal and religious type of things. Lots of sacred places, lots of people all over the world. Probably got them in the Alamo. <laughs> You know, you just mentioned portals. Now, isn't in this document or this film, y'all are actually trying to open a portal? Well, we are. My son in law was the co producer. He, he, he was you know, an early investigator in terms of looking for hairy creatures, but I sort of changed it. In terms of uh, this other side of all, most of his experiences were bottle the patterns and so forth. It was hard for him to admit that because I told him that I just did a little picture job. Right. I'm feeling the presence, the eye shine. He's never seen one more creature, never quite captured the real thing. So the idea of maybe it's more like, let's invite them. Say we want to invite them. Yeah. And so in the movie, we went, uh, we went to two places where there was. That would fit, that fit the bill for where there was a lot of paranormal activity going on at the same time. One, one was originated in a metal shed, which seems to be a source of the opening of the portal. Right? And, the, and, the, and the guy who owns it was an ordinary contractor from California who moved to a little town south of Eugene for his grandchildren. And then, yeah, he never had any sense. But then he, things started happening. And he, uh, he had been doing some research because of some cattle nearby. A guy got publicity and that's the story. And they he started playing around with the idea that something had been going on in this guy's house. Mm -hmm. so, and, and they had, not only did they have, their Bigfoot prints, they started playing games outside, gifting, you can buy your gift bag, your gift, things show up, and they would disappear, they come and go, a lot of that going on. And inside the shed, it would, it would record, there would be all this knocking, crazy stuff going on, like crazy, like some big thing and stuff, but there was nothing that would touch the food. They, and this ties into the thing with ghosts. The, uh, they picked up, they, they do these recordings, mm -hmm. electronic voice, EFT kind of thing. And they picked up voices of speaking foreign languages, women saying things that they recorded. Oh, wow. At one point, and, and a good big foot. But at one point, the kid who grew up in the mountains did suicide on a particular day and they were investigating. And the voice came through and said, I'm dead. Oh, no. And they found a little chalky handful of letters and calls in the piece of wood in the back of the victim. Little blue handprint on the same day. Oh, my goodness. So I'm going to, can I ask you one more question? When it comes to this film that you've just put out, yeah. do you think it's going to change people's, uh, the, the conventional way they think of Bigfoot? So, it's beginning, beginning to have the attraction. I mean, the only, the only way I can, can assess it right now is uh, looking at the reviews. And, you know, there are people that say, well, this changed looking at things different. So so anyhow we last night we were there we we wanted to see if we could record something to demonstrate what was going on. You know, so we, we took turns going into the uh, shed of the wrapping when it was a noise going on. And finally my son in law who's a bit of a scientist went in there. He had his own camera. Mm -hmm. With, with, uh, infrared sleep and audio. 
uh, we had to do the setup so that we could hear what was going on outside. Uh, I went in there. Uh, what, what was that again? I went in there, but nothing happened. Uh, nothing happened? When he was in there, the noise had started occurring. And we could hear them. We, he, we could pick them up on the camera. And he could say, yeah, that's old number one. Yeah, there's another one. And he felt this this kind of cold sense of being something was coming over him at the same time. So we were to some degree of shocking that. That was cool. We actually got to see that. You know, I was gonna say I was only gonna ask you one more question, but I gotta ask you another one. Um you, you know that because of our, our atoms and things in our body that we're all on a certain frequency. Do you think that frequency is why a lot of people are able to see these things while other people aren't? So, I kind of go in a different direction if you want to hear. Sure, sure. So, I, I kind of think that what, what our senses give us, you know, our sense of vision, all that, doesn't, doesn't, pretty much everybody agrees that that's all made up in the brain. That, you know, you don't have, it's actually not shared with somebody that we normally see it. That there's a, there's a deeper reality behind what our senses give. And that, that deeper reality is kind of where these parent components or physical entities exist. That um, the best analogy is, uh, is that if you look, you know, the computer uh, screen, mm -hmm. you see all these icons, you know, the document, and you put it in the trash, you haven't actually taken the document and put it in the trash at all. Behind that, that interface, is a bunch of code and electrons flying around and things like that. And in no way could you ever assess that reality and make sense of any document or anything for you on the desktop. It's just too complex, right? Right, right. How mathematical. So pretty much every every great technological innovation going way back is in some way mathematically based. You know, for example, have you ever tried to figure out quantum mechanics or all sorts of all these <laughs> You can't figure it out. I barely can balance my checkbook, man. <laughs> you know, and yet, yet it all works. Your cell phone works, right? So right. On the transit mathematics. And if you ask you know, physicists to explain quantum mechanics, it's not going to bother them to do it. So, in some sense, space, time, and objects still really exist. They're like our computer interface. So, when, when you experience paranormal events that somehow it's breaking through to the greater reality that what that reality is we really have to determine that it's periodical. Some people get a real deep mathematical appearance. When they get that they need to do things like quantum mechanics, learn how to build pyramids, and all these great achievements are all kind of mathematical geometric that you have to think in a slightly different way than Right. Well, you know, I, I lean towards that whole interdimensional, you know, the, the different worlds and, and the parallels and, you know, the different dimensions as we're what in the 3D dimension. And I, I forget what, how many they say there are, but I'm ready to move on to the next one, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, so in one, one sense, the only thing that's really real to us is right now, you know, our awareness, right? You're aware of something. Something like to be you, right? Because right. That's all you ever have to come out, right? If you think about it. Well, I'm ready to move on. Well, you probably will. <laughs> I'm waiting for that asteroid to hit us. So can you tell everybody how they can get a hold of you and where we can find your, your movies and 
Also, um, I, I will share the links to your movies on, in the, uh, in my posts. So. Yeah. So just go to Amazon, type in, uh, Bigfoot alien action reveal will come up. Okay. And if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can stream it for free. It'd be much appreciated if you all would sign up for that. And it uh, disclosed to some of the ideas that the predator will reveal its own fate. But even even if they say it's all bullshit, you know, reveal is good. Yeah. At least you know they watched it. Yeah. And I think, you know, there are bots that Amazon uses to uh, manipulate what people want to watch, give them ideas and so forth. Right, right. I think if there's a mixed bag of reviews, they know they're real. If they're all great or they're all poor, let's do it. Now, the other one was Chasing Bigfoot, right? Chasing Bigfoot. Big yeah, that's the one that I watched. It's a lot older. Um, I don't know what to think about it. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so much since then. You've you've moved on to the next level. Let's put it that way. So what do you think? Hey man, I I'm I'm very excited. Let's put it that way. I've actually talked about going on some uh, Bigfoot investigations myself. I'd never even thought about it before. And then the more I hear stories and, and what's going on in the, in the whole community, I'm like, hey, I think it's about time for me to get out there. So also there's this, my son-in-law is putting on an event called the Bigfoot Adventure Weekend. Uh huh. And it's, it's like three days in Colorado. It's day one of your camp. It's the weekend of August 7th. And you go on night ops and you get lectures. And I'll be there opening people up to having a direct experience of Bigfoot paranormally. And there'll be other groups that will, people who will be out in the normal way, like talking to kids, get on with the night ops. He's, he's, he's been doing it in Ohio, which is kind of very successful. So if, right. like, if you'd like to come, look it up on I think I sent you a link to that too. I, I, I think so. I'll put up all those links. And then uh, you also can find you on Instagram at Bigfoot Singularity. Yeah. And Facebook? I hear you. That's that. That's the way things are nowadays. Yeah. So Bigfoot Chronicles on Facebook. Yes. Okay. Well, sir, I thank you for your time. I really appreciate you coming on, and um, and I hope that our our viewers and our listeners will get out there and and uh, support your your short film. And it's on, on Amazon, and I will provide the links just as a reminder. Hey, you should watch it and give it a good one. Hey, I, you know, if I can get past this weekend, I think I might be able to. <laughs> my, my weekend is one thing after another. Interesting to watch it. But I, I did watch Chasing Bigfoot. Okay. So you remember the last time we talked, I said I was going to do it, and I did it. If I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us and, and for everyone out there that's listening or watching. We appreciate your support and continue to support our videos and our podcasts. Leave a review and, uh, and, and spread the word. So thank you once again. Be open. <laughs> right. All right, everyone. Take care. Thank you for joining us on Into the Pit. Please follow us on Facebook at the Vibes Broadcast Network and Instagram at the Vibes Broadcast.